Hey everybody, ChimneySwift here and welcome to a Minecraft tutorial where I'm going to be showing you guys how to build these amazing looking custom farms that you see behind me right here. Building these types of farms are incredibly easy and they add a lot of value, especially from a visual standpoint to your builds, your bases, your cities, your worlds, whatever it is that you're doing in Minecraft. These farms have a place there and you can do them kind of in any variety. I'm gonna show you guys a couple different options today, so let's jump into it. But before we dive right in, I wanna give a huge thank you to all my amazing patrons for supporting me and helping make content like this possible. If you'd like to support me and the content that I create here, you can do so through Patreon. There's a link down at the top of the description below. All right, so pulling back here, I wanna give you guys sort of a broad overview of what we're gonna be working on today. So I loaded up a new creative world and I made three different farms so far. So over here, we have a net based farm which I'll show you guys here in just a sec right in the middle we have a potato farm that's styled you know a little bit darker with some spruce woods and some dark oak and then over here at the entrance of the village we have this really large sort of stone designed wheat farm now I chose to build this inside of a village in Minecraft as I feel like it'll just help give you guys more of a visual representation of how these farms can be sort of integrated into a build so picture this as a much larger built up village and not just a standard Minecraft one with houses although I will admit that these farms do add a lot even to the look of a village like this as well. All right, so getting back down here on the ground, I'm actually now realizing I should probably turn off shaders. Hang on. Some of you guys may not have shaders in your world, so I figured I should probably just stick to regular vanilla looking Minecraft here so that you guys get a better idea of what this will look like. But from a regular Minecraft perspective, you know, feet on the ground, this is kind of what the entrance of this farm is going to look like. So I'm going to show you guys here first how I built this stone and wheat farm. And again, guys, you can basically adapt any of these farms in any style. So if you don't want this farm to be wheat, you could make this carrots or you could make it beetroot or whatever. And that's gonna go for any of the other farms that I show you guys today as well. We're gonna build another one at the end of this video also. All right, so taking a look over here in this chest, this is basically all the blocks that I use to create this farm right here. So we've got cobblestone, we've got cobblestone slabs, cobblestone stairs, cobblestone walls, and then the same for mossy, so mossy cobblestone, mossy cobblestone slabs, mossy cobblestone stairs, and mossy cobblestone walls. And then again, the same for just regular andesite. So we've got the blocks, the slabs, the stairs, and the walls. Then we have grass blocks, which you can honestly kind of get away with because if you're just gonna build your farm where an area that already has grass blocks, and you don't have silk touch or something, you can just use that, that's totally fine. You don't even actually need the grass blocks, but I did kind of like to use some of them to customize the path a little bit which you know makes things a little bit look a little bit nicer. We also have coarse dirt, gravel, spruce planks, spruce slabs, a composter, some pumpkins, jack-o-lanterns, melons, grass, tall grass, although you can kind of just get those, you know, if you get lucky with bone meal, ferns, large ferns, oak leaves, vines, rose bushes, lilacs, peonies, obviously like I said, bone meal, some spruce fences, lanterns, campfire, and then of course the essentials for farming like your seeds, some water, a hoe, and then I use a shovel for some of these custom paths here. So the nice thing about these blocks that I use for this are that they're really easy to get. Cobblestone's super easy to get. Mossy cobblestone's a little bit more difficult, but if you have vines, you can just make a vine farm and then you can convert your cobblestone to mossy cobblestone. So it's really not that big of a deal. Andesite's really easy to get. Obviously things like grass, coarse dirt, gravel, those are all easy. Spruce planks are easy. Composters are super easy. It may take you a little bit longer to get things like pumpkins and melons, but that's really not that big of a challenge. And then a lot of the decoration type of stuff is really just sort of optional. But the nice thing about these builds are that they're very simple in the sense that they don't use very advanced blocks. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do when building one of these is obviously to pick out an area. And I think the best way for me to properly show this to you guys is to sort of go through each of these blocks and kind of really get down and look through the nitty gritty details of this because just kind of looking at this from a bird's eye view or even on the ground may be a little bit confusing. So I'll show you guys sort of my thought process and then we'll get in, we'll jump in and I'm gonna actually build one on a time lapse for you guys so that you can kind of see how it all comes together. All right, so the one thing you'll notice this right here is that we have a step up and that's kind of important I really like to have a step up when going into a farm it just kind of elevates the crops a little bit more and gives it a bit more of an epic feel I guess but you can also have your crops on the same ground level so if you notice here this is the level that the this walkway is on and then this block is one block higher right here and our crops are on that level. Now, we do have another section here that drops down, and that was because the terrain that I built this on was actually just outlined exactly like this. So there was a little bit of an edge right here, and then that went down, and I just decided to keep with that. So we sort of have a farm that's on two levels, which I think is kind of cool. So now, once you've chosen your area, you're gonna wanna take cobblestone or whatever block you wanna have sort of be your main block for this build. And basically, this is where you get to have fun in designing shapes. 
Don't stress out too much about what your shape looks like. You can always change things later. But what I like to do is just sort of place blocks in kind of like a really warped oval looking or circular looking shape. It really doesn't matter. Sometimes like with this farm over here, I sort of just tried to follow the contour of what wasn't a path in the village. So basically this spot right here was just a green area and you know, kind of like right here. And I basically just tried to make the farm inside of that area. So you can kind of do whatever you want. But basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna start placing individual blocks around in a pattern around the outside of the farm. And it's gonna be very, very simple. You're just gonna have a you know cobblestone shape around the outside. And then the next thing you wanna do is you want to start adding blocks on top of that. So I actually went up three high. So if the level of the farm is right here, when you're standing inside of it, the number of blocks that you have sort of on the outside is usually around two. I say usually because sometimes in cases like this, we have like a half slab here or whatever, but basically you're just gonna try and build sort of like a wall around your farm, which is gonna kind of encase your crops and make it look really kind of cool and medieval looking. This villager is making a huge mess over here. I apologize, he is just, I don't know, he's doing his own thing. Also, I increased the world speed tick for this so that the crops grow super fast, which is actually really fun. Now, I kind of lied about the too high block thing because over here we have some variants, but basically once you get your walls placed down, that's where you get to start to be creative and you're gonna wanna mix in all the other blocks that we used and essentially start texturing your walls. So as you can see right here, I put a cobblestone block down here. I then removed the cobblestone block that was above it and instead I placed a slab right here which gives this kind of interesting looking gap. Down here on this one I put a mossy cobblestone block which added a little bit of texture. And basically what you're gonna do is you wanna roughen up the top part as well. So you're gonna put things on the top like stairs and put these in all different directions. This one's kind of facing that way. Then on the back side of it we have a slab. Over here is a full block. Then right here, we have a mossy cobblestone stair that's facing the other direction. Again, I kind of wanted to go into more detail like this, showing you guys, you know, right up close, because it's kind of hard to get an understanding of what blocks were used and how they were placed when I zoom out from a bird's eye view. Again, over here, we've got some more mossy cobblestone stairs facing in all different directions. We got a slab. We have no slab, or, or wait, no, sorry, we have a slab here, uh, but right here is just a regular, you know, two high or three high wall of, you know, cobblestone or mossy cobblestone. Then we've got another stair right here, followed by a slab. Throwing in some andesite here. This one's kind of creative because we actually, it looks like a full block of andesite, but it's actually two slabs on top of each other in sort of like the one block or half block high shifted up position from what would be an actual full block. So if I go down below here, you'll see there's actually a gap right here. And so I placed the first slab on the top half of the block next to it and I placed then a slab on top of that. And basically that's kind of how you texture the top of the wall. And it really makes a nice sort of detailed look here as you sort of pan your eye down the top of the wall. We've also added in some things like, you know, fence posts with lanterns on top. We've got things like vines over here that are adding a bit more, you know, sort of grunge and texture to the build. This spot over here is kind of cool. We've got a stair that is placed right here, cobblestone stair. And then on the other side, we have it flipped and it's like an upside down stair, but on the left side of this, you know, this block over here, and it kind of makes this interesting two hole design. So basically the idea here is to just sort of rough up your walls, make them look textured, and also, if you're gonna have a villager as well, I learned this the hard way, if you're gonna have a villager that has a profession with this composter, I mean, I like putting composters in here just so that I can clean up and, and if I don't have, you know, if I have extra seeds that I don't need, I can just throw them away. It totally did not mean to just break that. My dude's out of a job, hold on. All right, dude, come on, get, get back to work. There we go, thank you. So just make sure, like I said, that your villager can't jump up. He's gonna come back to this composter a lot. And honestly, when the first time I built this, these blocks were not high enough and he kept jumping up here and then he'd fall down on the crops and he kept ruining all the crops in this area. It was kind of annoying. So just keep that in mind. He's not gonna wander super far away from the composter, but it is kind of fun to just have a little worker running around and harvesting your crops for you. Quick side note as well, if you wanna turn this into a bone meal farm of sorts is actually, I think he kind of, I think he places stuff in here in the composter. I rigged up a whole redstone system below this that basically, you know, takes the items down and then drop, you know, moves it over. And I have a chest over here with a bubble column where we're just getting some bone meal. So he's just gonna continue harvesting stuff. And I'm pretty sure he puts seeds in there if he doesn't need them. So it's just an extra bonus way to get some bone meal. Just, you know, if you are interested. And if you want me to do a tutorial on something like that later, I can totally do that. Just let me know down in the comment section below. Okay, so moving on to the actual crops part. And this is the most important part, obviously, is you're gonna need to have different sources of water throughout your farm so that your crops remain irrigated. And it's pretty simple. As you can see here, all I have is just a waterlogged block. 
So right here we have a spruce slab. If I break that, you'll see that there's a block of water right here. I prefer using these slabs because you can basically just place them on the top portion of this block right here, which is gonna be hard because I'm in the way of some crops. There we go. Basically, it's just gonna make sure that you don't fall in the water, but the water is still accessible to the crops and it will irrigate all of them. Now the last thing here that you guys will wanna take note of as for the additional texturing and decoration on the outside, essentially guys, I just try to get creative with things like walls and melons and leaves and flowers and grass and tall flowers and vines and lanterns and you know fences and stuff like that. I tried to get as creative as I could with just sort of adding some texture. I even put some blocks, you know, cobblestone and mossy cobblestone blocks into the ground. And you really just kind of want to make this area look a little bit more, I don't know what the right word is, I guess just decorated. So put plant stuff around, put foliage, put green items, put red items, put orange items. It's kind of fun as well to put some jack-o'-lanterns under the ground, put some leaves on top of that so you got some light coming out, you know, which will protect you from some mob spawns outside of your farm. Mobs will not be able to spawn inside your farm because they won't be able to spawn on crop blocks. So don't really worry too much about trying to light up the inside of your farm. You can if you want to, but it's not essential. If you just wanna kind of maybe pause the video here a little bit and kind of get some of the ideas that I've taken, and if you kind of just wanna see some of the stuff that I placed around the outside edges here, you can totally do that. Feel free to pause this video whenever you need and take screenshots or whatever. Or you guys can always leave me a comment down below if you need some help. Or better yet, if you have any specific questions, come join our Discord. Link is in the description below and you can ask me any questions you want about builds like this and I'd be happy to answer them. As for things like the campfire, these are pretty much just optional. I put this on the outside with a little seat. So it kind of looks like you could sit here and just have a nice leisurely evening in Minecraft next to your farm if that's what you want to do. All right, so that's the wheat farm. Let's move on over here really quickly. I want to show you guys this potato farm. So for this one, I use some darker woods. We've got some dark oak that is stripped. I even have a piece of bamboo here with a string on top so it doesn't grow any higher. We've got some stripped spruce woods here. We've got some mushrooms. We've got podzol. We've got regular spruce. We've got, you know, dark oak stairs and half slabs. We've got spruce trap doors and dark oak fences. On this one, I decided to put a little gate in front. So we've got some spruce gates here. And inside we've got our composters, some more podzol. And then of course we have our potatoes inside, and instead of using the spruce half slabs for this, I used the dark oak half slabs for our waterlogged block. And again, just kind of mixed in some different textures here. We're using spruce leaves on the outside instead of the oak leaves like we did over there. Even added in some buttons for this just for some additional texture on the wood. We still got our lanterns here. I love the look of these. I like the added look as well of these dead shrubs and some red mushrooms are a nice little bit of color on the outside as well. And I even threw in some oak wood as well because I felt like that texture fit kind of with some of this stuff. And honestly, guys, it's kind of fun. You know, this initially was just like an oak wall right here. And so I was like, you know what? That's kind of boring. Let's go ahead and put a spruce fence in here. It does the same job. It keeps things out, you know, cause you don't want mobs or animals or whatever walking across your farm. That's kind of why I like to keep these walls relatively high. So that's that one, the potato farm it looks pretty cool. And then flying over here, this one's fairly basic, but, and it's honestly not all that functional, but this is our little nether farm. So with Minecraft 1.16, We've got a ton of new blocks. And so I decided to sort of do the exact same type of style, but I just tried to mix in some of the darker nether blocks. And it's not really functional because these warped roots, they don't really do anything. There's really no purpose for them. Same with the crimson roots. There's, you can't harvest them. That They don't serve any purpose for crops. It's basically just decoration. So this farm is 100% decorative, but it's still kind of a cool idea. And obviously for this, you're gonna need the warped nylium or the crimson nylium, depending on what color you know you wanna make this farm or whatever. But basically for this, I just use these different blocks right here. I use warped nylium, nether bricks, cracked nether bricks, nether brick stairs, nether brick slabs, blackstone, blackstone slabs, blackstone stairs, polished blackstone bricks, polished blackstone brick slabs. Same with the stairs for those. I don't know that I put gilded blackstone in here. We added in some basalt. We've obviously got our little crops, the warped roots or the crimson roots some soul lanterns, and then just a warped sign. So you guys can kind of get creative. Some other blocks you could kind of place around the outside if you wanted to decorate a little bit more would be stuff like crying obsidian and you know maybe some of the gilded blackstone and different things like that. Okay, so to properly get into all the stuff that I just described to you guys, because I felt like it'd be best to give you guys sort of a step-by-step -step understanding, I would like to now build one of these for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this into a time-lapse. I might start out by placing blocks and just talking to you guys but as we get into all the detailing and stuff, I'll just put it into a time lapse. So let's go ahead and we're gonna build a beet farm. Look, they're not the best crop. You know, the food is pretty terrible, but they look really cool with the red underside, the red underbelly of the, the crop. 
you know, with the green top and the red beat underneath. I think it looks really cool. So let's go ahead and build one of those right now. And we'll start with this cobblestone style right here as it's one of my favorites. And that actually reminds me that I wanted to mention at the beginning of this video that building these types of farms are very quickly becoming one of my all time favorite things to build in Minecraft. There's something very therapeutic and calming about building a farm like this. It's just, I don't know, it's just a lot of fun and they end up looking really freaking cool. So I absolutely love building these and I'm very excited to get started today. So I'm gonna pick a spot. I think we'll just do a small one like right here. I'm not really too worried that there's path blocks here. We'll just kind of get rid of that. So let's grab some blocks and get started. All right, so I've got my cobblestone. Let's just go ahead and mark this out. I'm actually gonna break these and we'll get, you know, because I've got the world tick set so high, this will just give me these grass blocks back and I don't have to place them because I'm gonna destroy these. And then the grass you see is just, the world tick is super high. So it's just making all these grass very, very fast. But I think what I'd like to do, like I said, is first we're gonna outline the area. So here's kind of how I do this. Basically, I'm gonna keep a one block gap from the path. So we're not gonna place a block here. We'll start maybe like right here. And then I'm just gonna kind of go and sort of like this, just a, a little bit of a shape that I find a little bit interesting. So it's kind of kind of just be like, we're going in sort of a circle, but maybe we kind of branch it out a little bit over here. Maybe we go kind of like that and then bring it back around like so. So the shape is gonna be kind of like this and we can make the entrance as big or as small as we want. So we could either leave it like this or we could make the entrance a little bit smaller and make it sort of like a two block entrance. I'm thinking maybe a three block entrance would be kind of fun and kind of have it offset from the center. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break and destroy all of these pieces of grass right here because we don't need them. And then, like I said, the next thing you wanna do is just bring these up at least too high because we're gonna raise this, the level of this farm up one. There we go. So we've got that wall all the way around. The next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna place our blocks inside for the actual farm and you know how we want it. So maybe we'll kind of stagger this a little bit. Maybe we'll make something kind of like that. It's kind of fun to play around with the different shapes. Things don't have to be symmetrical. That's the idea that I want to give you guys. Things do not have to be symmetrical here at all. And you can kind of make these exactly how you want them. All right, so there we go. This is going to be the level of our crops right here. We've got our wall right here around. And if you want to make things a little bit easier for you to get in and out, you can now place your slabs down. So we'll just grab some spruce, kind of go like that. Now we have an easy way to get in and out of our farm. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a bunch of cobblestone slabs, stairs, walls, as well as mossy cobblestone blocks, stairs, slabs, and walls. And this is where we're going to start texturing things. So I'm going to maybe place some cobblestone, mossy cobblestone, sort of like this. Maybe we'll do that. This one is kind of, we don't want that like that. So we'll put like a slab here. Maybe right here, we're gonna knock this block out. We'll put a stair like that. And already this wall is looking way more interesting than it did just even a minute ago. And why have a full block right here? Let's just bust this out and put a mossy cobblestone slab right there. Over here on this backside wall, we're not gonna need this. Let's just put a wall right there. Let's put a stair right here. We could even raise this up and put a slab like that, as well as maybe like an upside down stair right there. Let's throw in a piece of mossy cobblestone right there. And we'll also put like a mossy cobblestone stair like that. Now instantly this wall is looking way better. I'm really liking this and we'll put in two. Uh, no, let's keep the cobblestone like that. And yeah, you kind of just want to run through and essentially you're just going to sort of vary things up and make different textures and have a lot of fun with building and making things look in a, you know, sort of a, a unique way. You could even put a wall right here and then put like a lantern on top of that or something. Boom, easy mode right there. It looks pretty cool. All right, so just this little rounded corner right here, you can tell it's already looking better than say just right here. This doesn't look all that great over on this side. So let's get to work on this as well. There we go, I think that's looking pretty good. The only thing we haven't added in here is andesite. So maybe we'll sort of mix in a couple of those. Let me grab some real fast. And again, this is optional. You guys don't have to do this if you don't want. You don't have to do andesite or anything in here. But kind of what I like to do is sort of decide, all right, well maybe we got a little too much cobblestone over here. Let's kind of mix things up just a little bit. Gives it just a bit more texture. Kind of makes things look a little bit more interesting than just having two blocks. All right, there we go. I think that's looking pretty stellar. All right, next we're gonna do some exterior decoration. So I'm just gonna kind of run around here, fly around and place some rose bushes in random spots. 
as well as adding things in like tall grass and we're gonna put some vines in some certain areas as well. And then we'll drop in some things like pumpkins, maybe a melon or two, and definitely things like jack-o'-lanterns for some light. Maybe on top of these jack-o'-lanterns over here, we'll put a couple bushes, add some different bushes around in different areas, like maybe down here. Maybe we have these bushes kind of come up a little bit, but maybe not all the way so that you can't jump up. And honestly, just get creative. So if you want to have like a light source over here, you could have a fence post with a lantern on top of it. You could even kind of do some stuff like that on the back side. Maybe you've got a fence post like that with a lantern there, or you can hang them off the side as well, kind of like this and you can have the lantern sort of hanging like that, which I think looks kind of cool. Obviously, you wouldn't have a chest there. I've just got some different seeds in there from earlier, which I kind of need to move this chest out of the way. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how this is looking so far, except for one thing. We need to add the crops, obviously. So let's grab some water. All right, we've got our water, we've got our slabs, we've got our hoe, and we've got our seeds. Now, this farm isn't super large, so we're probably gonna need, I don't know, we might just need two sources of water. We'll start right here in the middle and just put a slab of water log that, and then I'll basically just till all the soil, and again, guys, this is happening super fast because I've got the world speed tick up really high and you can see that over here these you know this block area is not irrigated so that's gonna be a little bit of a problem this block right here goes all the way to here but it's just stops there so maybe what we do is we actually put two water logged blocks here let's go ahead and just put one right there and then maybe we can move this one to like I don't know I don't want this to be on the exact same level I kind of want to vary it up a little bit so maybe we'll put it like right here all right I totally messed that up we're gonna put it right here not over these two blocks. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, so there we go. We've got our irrigated farmland. Now all we have left to do is place down our seeds. All right, so as you can see, these beetroot look really cool. We've got the red and the green. It's just a nice looking sort of colored farm, which I think looks really awesome. Now, actually, I kind of made a bit of a mistake. I mean, this is totally fine. You can walk straight up to your crops. But what I kind of like to do is I kind of like to put some blocks you know, right here so that you kind of have a little bit of a working area. So I'm actually gonna knock these crops out. Let's go ahead and knock out these crops, maybe like this. And instead of having farmland here, I'd actually kind of want to put just like some coarse dirt or something. And to keep this from being actually too boxy, let's actually put another crop right there. We'll just kind of make it like in this little area here. All right, so let's knock these out and we'll just put coarse dirt in. You can put podzol or grass or whatever you want. And then we'll throw our composter just right here. You can also put like a little chest in the ground here that has a hoe in it in case you're somebody like me sometimes and you accidentally, you know, jump on your crops or something gets messed up and you're like, oh shoot, I don't want to leave it looking like that. Now I got to run all the way back to my house, get my hoe, come back. I don't really carry the hoe on me. So you can always just kind of keep one at your farm or you can put it like in an item frame on the wall or something like that. And if maybe you have a chest with some extra seeds just in case something goes wrong. But basically, guys, that is the farm. It's very, very simple. You can scale this up as large as you want. You can make it small, as small as you want. You could put them right next to each other. You could do like a huge wheat farm like this and then butting up right against the side. You could even have it connected. You could, you know, bust down this wall and have both farms connected or you could have them separate. You could have like a huge carrot farm or a potato farm or whatever you want. You can make farms all over the freaking place. It doesn't matter. But anyways, guys, that is my video here today on how to make these amazing looking custom farms in Minecraft. Again, like I said, they are some of my favorite things to build. I really do love building these. They are a lot of fun and they really make an area sort of come to life and come together. And I just think that they look really neat and interesting. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave me a comment down below on this video. You can also join my Discord as well. It's discord.gg slash chimneyswift11. And you can ask me any questions about these farms or you know, you need some ideas from me or whatever, hit me up in the Discord. I'd be happy to provide you guys with some help or some inspiration. And yeah, we'll be back again very, very soon with another Minecraft tutorial. And I just wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new, click that bell icon as well if you haven't done so yet. Even if you just subscribe, it's not guaranteed that you'll be able to see my video on YouTube in your homepage or in your sub box. So click that bell icon and enable notifications. That way you'll be sure to see my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Peace. Real quick, I'd like to give a huge thanks to all my amazing patrons for helping make this video possible. And a special thank you to our newest patrons, Stephen W, Peyton H, Austin, Darth Infernus, and Samuel W. Thank you all so much for your support. Guys, if you're interested in helping support me and the content that I create through Patreon, click the link down below and you can see your name here at the end of another video. Thanks so much for watching, guys.